So this video is for the threes class and for the fours class. So I saw some of you at the parade. Thank you so much for coming. That was so fun. I didn't know so many people would decorate their cars and have signs. Some people's heads were popping out of the top of their cars. There was bubbles and some people brought some signs. Thank you to Miss Emma for making me this beautiful. It has aluminum foil art. And uh, Elizabeth and Camilla and Victoria brought me some beautiful, beautiful art and even a bracelet that says Mrs. Herrig. And there was flowers. When I got home, there was a nice picture from Mason Peck waiting for me. So you guys are all so thoughtful and such good artists. Ben made this great poster telling me how he has a trampoline, two cats, one dog. Am I done with my homework yet? All sorts of good information on this. And Rory, thank you so much for the lovely card. And Helen Harper, look at this giant poster for Mrs. Glaze and Mrs. Herrig. So if you weren't at the parade, we missed you, but don't worry about it at all. And then some of us went to church today. It's Friday right now while I'm filming. I don't know when this will get to you, but some of us went to church for the end of the school year mass, and I heard some people won Christian Spirit Award that are big brothers, big sisters to some of our friends. I heard Grace and Audrey Rudolph, that's Isabel's big sisters, and I heard Maddie Peck is Mason's big sister. So it's so exciting, and there could be some other ones. Those are just some that I remember right off the top of my head, but it was so nice. So what a wonderful year we have, and let's get reading some of our books, but thank you, thank you, thank you for all your lovely flowers and cards and gifts and kind words. Okay, let's start with, I bet you know it, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Harold and the Purple Crayon. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a short cut across a field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly he realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. 
The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. Wonder if any of you like pie. Nine kinds, wow. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, so Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. What do you think he remembered? He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. Oh, it's such a good one. And I'm looking at the back of this, there's so many more Harold books. There's Harold's Trip to the Sky, Harold at the North Pole, Harold's Circus. Wow. So that is Harold in the Purple Crayon. Hi, Pre-4 friends. I've got one more frog and toad story for you. This one's called Dragons and Giants. Frog and Toad were reading a book together. The people in this book are brave, said Toad. They fight dragons and giants and they are never afraid. I wonder if we are brave, said to Frog. Frog and Toad looked into the mirror. We look brave, said Frog. Yes, but are we? asked Toad. Frog and Toad went outside. We can try to climb this mountain, said Frog. That should tell us if we are brave. Frog went leaping over rocks and Toad came puffing up behind him. They came to a dark cave. A big snake came out of the cave. Hello, lunch, said the snake when he saw Frog and Toad. He opened his wide mouth. Frog and Toad jumped away. Toad was shaking. I am not afraid, he cried. They climbed higher and they heard a loud noise. Many large stones were rolling down the mountain. It's an avalanche, cried Toad. Frog and Toad jumped away. Frog was trembling. I am not afraid, he shouted. They came to the top of the mountain. 
The shadow of a hawk fell over them. Frog and Toad jumped under a rock. The hawk flew away. We are not afraid, screamed Frog and Toad at the same time. Then they ran down the mountain very fast. They ran past the place where they saw the avalanche. They ran past the place where they saw the snake. They ran all the way to Toad's house. Frog, I am glad to have a brave friend like you, said Toad. He jumped into the bed and pulled the covers over his head. And I am happy to know a brave person like you, Toad, said Frog. He jumped into the closet and shut the door. Toad stayed in the bed and Frog stayed in the closet. They stayed there for a long time, just feeling very brave together. And that's the end. Bye, friends. <laughs>